when your brain is telling you, you know, you know, you're useless, you're pathetic, go hang yourself, go get that chair, go get that chair, drive off cave and find some woods and hang yourself so that no one will find you. That's what I did one summer day. You know, your brain is just, it's like it's this, I don't want to say a devil, because I don't get into that kind of stuff, but it is, it's like this little mischief maker. In my book, I call it the Grim Reaper. You know, I've got this Grim Reaper over here saying, come on, come on, just check out, just go on, check out. In 1992, um, I overdosed on um, Prozac and lithium and something else, nortriptyline. And um, basically, I, I made the levels of medication in my body like five times higher than they should have been. And I could have been severely damaged. Um, my kidneys, my liver, I could have been blind, I could have been deaf. And I gobbled down all these pills and, um, and I, started to, I started to feel the effects of them. And of course, I called someone for help and he told me to get off the phone so we could call back and tell my dad who was downstairs watching TV. My dad found me in the bathroom with my finger down my throat. And then he and my stepmom took me down the stairs and I passed out and they took me in the car to the hospital and I woke up in ICU and um, the reason I woke up was I couldn't breathe and I was gasping for air and I just said you know I I didn't know what was going on I was kind of like dazed anyway and I just thought I said oh my god oh my god you know something's blocking my throat so I tried to remove this thing from my throat and when I went to lift up my arms I found that my wrists had been tied to the bed rails and I was like totally helpless. And I just think it's so interesting that I felt totally helpless and my thoughts were like, oh my God, I don't want to die, and I had just overdosed. And the fact that, one, I took the pills, when I felt them kick in, I called for help. After I called for help, I tried to make myself throw up. When I thought I was going to die, I fought to breathe. You know, and I had just overdosed. And, and when that happened, in that moment, when I was in the ER, no, I guess I was in ICU, and I said, in my brain, I said, oh my God, but I don't want to die. And my thought that went through my head was like, yeah, but Sue, you just OD'd. So what's that all about? Like, what was the OD about then if you didn't want to die? And it was like that moment was one of the key moments when I realized, like, okay, like, I have a choice here. Getting better is about learning how to live, learning how to manage my feelings. I wouldn't say control. I don't like that word control because it's not about control. If I try to control my life, forget it. I have to give up control of my life in order to have a better life. The more I give up control, the better my life is. But there's a difference between having control and doing the footwork or, you know, like making good choices, doing the legwork, asking for help. When I was actively suicidal, I went to libraries, I went to schools, I went to bookstores, and I couldn't find anything that told you how not to kill yourself. I found books that told you how to kill yourself. I found books that talked about statistics, clinical books, but there was nothing written from a layperson's point of view. I mean, there are memoirs, you know, of people that have been in psych units or people that have had depression, and they talk about how they did it, sort of, you know, I did this and my family, but this is like how, like, number, literally, number one, take a deep breath, number two, Da, 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 number three. And within each chapter, there's different exercises. There's all kinds of stuff. And there's tips on food. There's tips on, you know, like if you don't have enough money, where you can get free food. There's tips on rest. There's tips on how to release anger, like throwing raw eggs at trees, batting raw eggs with a bat. But don't do it into the window. You get a face full of egg like I did, you know. Um, you know, throwing rocks, pounding pillows, screaming in your car. Just like all these I could, all I did was I just like sat there and I thought of every single thing that I used and I put it in a book. It's like Betty Crocker for suicide prevention. This is how you do it, or this is how you don't do it. There's a whole thing about who to call if you know someone who is, you know, actively suicidal or talking about suicide, how to talk to them, what to say, what to do, direct, concrete suggestions on what to do. I mean, we've got thousands of people with exercise videos, right? This is how you make your stomach flat, you know, this is how you lose this weight, but we don't have anyone that's sitting there saying, okay, when your brain is telling you to go get some rope and make a noose and tie yourself from a tree in your backyard, this is what you have to do.
you have to not get the rope, you have to call a friend, you have to make a crisis plan, you have to follow, you know, there's no one doing that. It feels to me, from everything I've been hearing, that it's like right on the edge of burgeoning into this big, aha, let's do something about it thing around the world. I mean, not just in the U.S., which is why I think this book, the timing of this book is perfect. And I feel really grateful for that. This is a poem that was written um, by a man named Christopher Brell. And um, Christopher Brell is the brother of my editor of this book. And Chris killed himself on June 29th, 1993. He was 29. He put a gun to his head and uh, shot himself. And he wrote this poem three months before he did that. It's called Geese. We stood there watching. The geese were unafraid. Life is so wonderful sometimes. They took up honking all the way, over the rivulets, then the harbor, my heart melting, I watching them fly wing to wing, my heart streaming as the water flowing from the pond into the body of the sound of the birds flying above. No, skimming over the water, wing to glorious wing, flapping up and down, no, making an arc through air quickly, but not so quickly, that you couldn't see them, not like a hummingbird, not like an eagle, somewhere in between. My grace is sufficient for you. And Chris died three months later from a gunshot wound to the head. And his sister, when she read my book, she said to me that, Sue, I just wish to God I had had this book 10 years ago.